In the last 150 years, shotgunning has undergone many advancements. From black powder, where the powder, wad, and shot were loaded directly down the barrel, to hammer guns with Damascus barrels, to brass shells. Then came paper shells with brass bases. Smokeless powder improved the safety and cleanliness of shotgunning. Today we have plastic shells and plastic wads. One component that has undergone very little change over the last hundred years is lead shot. Today the Shotgun Journal is in Carson City, Nevada at West Coast Shot Incorporated to take a look at how lead shot is made. Brian Rich is the general manager of West Coast Shot Incorporated and he's agreed to take us on a tour to show us how lead shot is made. Well, it looks like it starts right here. It does. This is our raw material and how we receive it. They're in 56 pound pigs. One bundle is roughly 2,000 pounds. It comes to us already alloyed, ready to melt, ready to pour and make shot out of. Now these bundles of 2,000 pounds or so are loaded into the mother pot down here with a forklift and brought up to temperature roughly 800 degrees. And we found that 800 degrees is a very good temperature to pour. And we have to transfer it from here up to the tower by virtue or by way of a lift. Once the lead reaches the top, then I assume it's put into another pot and heated again. Correct. Uh, that pot is smaller than this one, but it is there to maintain the temperature that we have to have to be able to work with the lead. There are three very important parts to making shot. Lead temperature is one of them. Uh, the pan hole size that you use in the pan is another, and then the speed at which you run the lead through that pan is another. I happen to have a pan right here that is a perfect example. Now, you can't really tell by looking at this unless you can count real quick, but there's roughly seven to 800 holes in each one of these pans. And what can help determine, in a big way, the size of shot that you're going to make is the size of hole that you're pouring it through. However, the hole is a lot smaller than the actual piece of shot that is made with each one of them. So the lid's poured in there, it falls down through the, the large pipe Correct. that is on the tower. And the reason for the pipe is? To block the wind. Oh, just to keep the wind from blowing the shot into each other That's while correct. it's still in a liquid state. That's right. It may take the first 30 or 40 feet to just start to become solid, and wind can cause it to connect together before it is solid. The lead comes down that, solidifies, and then where does it go? It falls into a tank of water, which I'll be glad to show you right now. Today we're making eights. Okay. And Bruce, now that it, the lead has fallen 150 feet into water, into a tank of water, uh, it begins to cool. And they used to do that 150 years ago, pouring it off of cliffs into rivers, and then they go down and reclaim it. In our case, we get to just release it from the bottom of the tank. Let me show it to you. As you can see, Bruce, this is where the shot comes out the bottom of the tank, and most people think it looks just like water, but obviously it's not. The shot is then transported to our dryer, which I will show you next. Once the shot has come out of our dryer tube, it goes across the dispersal tube, which puts it across the table and eliminates all of the bad shot. The shot now comes out of the dryer tube and rolls across our table, and as you can see, the slits in the table allows the bad shot or the doubles that stick together to not go all the way across the table. They go into a collection drum and go back in our pot. All the good shot goes to the end of the table for the further processing. Now our next to last step, Bruce, is to run our shot through a series of screens. This is our backbone. This really helps us to separate the sizes. And today, uh, like I said before, we're making eight. So this is kind of the quality control where it goes through the different screens and, and you get the precise eights. Absolutely. Within plus or minus two thousandths is what we advertise and what we maintain. From the shaker where the shot sizes have been separated, the last step is to polish the shot before we bag it. And we polish it two tons at a time, and right now we're dumping in one ton. We'll add graphite, and we'll polish. And of course, the last step is the weighing and the bagging, the final packaging of the finished product. Well, Brian, I really thank you for taking us on this tour. I found it very interesting, and I'm sure the audience did also. So the next time you dump a bag of shot into your reloader, Hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how your shot was made.